Hi there, I'm Paul Belflam, and this is Industrial Organization. This presentation is about sequential choices by competing firms, and in particular we want to look at models of sequential decisions when these decisions are either quantity or prices, and the question we ask is about first or second move advantage. You'll find here the chapter and section in the book which you can read to have some background about this topic. Right, so last week we were considering simultaneous decisions. That was meant to represent situations where firms are not able to observe each other's decision before making their own decision. We want to change this in this presentation and consider instead sequential decisions. So that means that it's possible for some firm or some firms to act before competitors, meaning that these competitors can observe the choices of the first firms. Okay, so one example of such situation would be a case where uh, a, a firm have, has been granted a patent on a particular product, meaning that for 20 years this firm is the only one to be allowed to produce a particular product. Okay, and so before uh, the exp expiration of the patent, and so before the entry on the market of potential competitors, well, the patent owner is in a leader position. It can take decisions before competitors can make their own decisions. Okay, so the question we want to ask here, is it a good thing to be the leader or would it be better to be a follower? Okay, so that's the main question. And as we will see, the answer will depend on the nature of the strategic variables, whether it's price or quantities. It will also depend on the number of firms moving at different stages. This is the program for this presentation. So we'll look first at a situation where there is one leader and one follower, so a duopoly, and there we defined a first mover advantage in the following way. A firm has a first mover advantage if it gets a higher payoff in the game in which it is a leader than in the symmetric game in which it is a follower. If the reverse applies, then we say that the firm has a second mover advantage. Okay, so this setting with one leader and one follower, we will study it first with quantity competition, and this is called the Stackelberg model. Okay, and then we will move uh, briefly to a similar situation where firms choose prices. And finally, we will talk about what happens when there is one leader but potentially many followers. And there we won't make a difference between quantity and price competition. Right, so let's start with sequential choices in a duopoly. There are two firms. One firm will be called the leader and the second firm will be called the follower. Okay, so that's different with the Kono model that we saw last week where the two firms were making the decisions at the same time, meaning they were not observing the choice of the other firm when they, want, they were choosing their own quantity. Okay, this model we are going to look at is due to uh, Mr. von Stackelberg, a uh, German economist from the 20th century. Okay, so here is a, 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 a simple model. Take this inverse demand here. Uh, the price is A minus Q1 minus Q2. For simplicity, suppose that the firms have zero marginal cost. Okay, um, and so the main difference with what we saw last week is that we assume that in period one, firm one chooses Q1, and then in the next period, Firm 2 observes Q1 and then chooses Q2. Okay, so Firm 2 can observe the choice of Firm 1 before making its own choice. It's a uh, sequential game, and we are interested in the subgame perfect equilibrium of that game. And we are going to find this using the method of backward induction, which means that we start from the last stage, that is, we find the optimal Q2 for a given Q1. And then we move to the first stage uh, and we look at the optimal Q1 with the knowledge that firm 1 can influence the choice of firm 2. Okay, we'll make this clear now when solving the model. Right, as I said, we start with period 2. What is the problem of firm 2? Well, it chooses its quantity to maximize its profit. Here, because we assume that the marginal cost is zero, profit is equal just to revenue. Okay. First order condition will tell us 
what quantity firm to choose. So we take the first order derivative, derivative of profit equated to zero. This is what we get. By now you should be able to do this on your own. And if we solve for Q2, this is what we find. Q2 is one half of A minus Q1. This is the best response of firm two for the Q1 that firm two has observed at the start of period two. Okay. Before we move to the first stage, let us just uh, look at the simultaneous choice model, which is the corner model we saw last week. So what would happen if firm one was choosing at the same time as first firm two? Okay. Um, then firm one would have a similar reaction function. Uh, Q1 would be equal to one half of A minus Q2. And if you solve, so if you look at this, the solution of this system of equation here, then you find that Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to A over 3. We put a sub, sub, superscript C here for cone law. Okay? If you compute the price at the equilibrium, it's also A over 3. And so the profit of the two firms at the cone equilibrium is A squared over 9. Okay? So we keep that in the corner of our, mind, of our mind because we will compare the result of the Stackelberg model to the result of this model. Okay, so let's go back to the Stackelberg model and move to period one. So here we've got firms one. Firm one is choosing its quantity. Okay, but look, we, we've written Q2 as a function of Q1. Why do we do so? Because firm one is in a position to anticipate what firm two is going to choose as a reaction to the, the quantity that firm one is choosing. Okay, so firm one realizes that by changing Q1, it also changes Q2. Okay, so if we develop this, I've written here, uh, instead of Q2, I've written, let me go back to the previous slide, I have written here uh, the reaction function of firm 2. Okay, and if I develop this, I find that the profit of firm 1, taking into account the reaction of firm 2, can be written as one half of A minus Q1 times Q1. Okay? Note, and this is what we wanted, that Q2 has disappeared here. Okay? In a sense, firm 1 is anticipating the, equilib the equilibrium of the second stage. Okay? So this is, remember, what a subgame perfect equilibrium is. We want to have a Nash equilibrium at every subgame. Sub Okay, and using the method of backward induction, we rule out any non-credible threat of the second player. Okay, so what remains to be done now is to solve for the optimal Q1. This is the usual meta method. We um, take the first order derivative equated to zero, and this is what we find Q1. We name it Q1L, L for leader, is equal to A over 2. If I replace this in the reaction function of firm 2, I find the optimal uh, or the equilibrium uh, quantity of firm 2. The F here is for follower. And you will find it is, is equal to A4. Put these two quantities in the price function, you find the optimal price. And so you can compute the uh, equilibrium uh, profits of the two firms. The leader is having a profit of A squared over 8 and the follower a lower profit of a square over 16. Okay, so if you go back to the previous slide, I'm not going to do it, um, you will realize that the quantity of the leader is larger than the quantity under the Kono game, which is itself larger than the quantity of the follower, and we have exactly the same ranking for the profit. Okay, by the way, the profit of the follower would be what firm one would achieve if it was the follower. So if we were just redoing the game with firm two the leader and firm one the follower, that would be the profit of firm one. Okay, everything is symmetric here between the two firms, they have the same costs. Okay, so that allows us to say that firm one or the leader has an advantage. There is a first mover advantage. Remember the definition, you make a high, larger profit in the game where you are a leader than in the game in which you are a follower. Okay, so let's collect our results. Uh, there is a first mover advantage here. Uh, firms make a higher profit in the game in which they are a leader than in the symmetric game in which they are a follower. And if we compare with the Kuno game, where firms move at the same time, 
the leader produces a larger quantity, the follower produces a smaller quantity. And what is the intuition for that? Well, the leader in the sequential move game has strong incentives to increase the quantity when the follower observes and reacts to this quantity than when the follower doesn't. Okay, why is that so? When the follower reacts, well, when firm 1 increases its quantity, it knows that firm 2 is going to react by decreasing its quantity. Okay? Now, if you increase your quantity, you know that the price you will receive is going to decrease. Okay? So you always have to trade off what you can gain by producing more and what you lose by selling at a lower price. Okay? Now, if you know that your increase in quantity will be uh, followed by a decrease in the quantity of the other firm, well, you also know that the price decrease will not be as large as if the other firm was not reacting. Okay, so you benefit in a sense from the fact that the other firm decreases its quantity, which has a positive impact on the price. Okay, so let's, let's try to see this more clearly uh, with some um, analytical uh, developments. Okay, so I, I do this now in a very general way. Just considering this price function here, this, this uh, inverse demand, P of Q1, Q2. So this is the problem firm 1, right? And if I look at its first order condition for profit maximization, we know that this has to be uh, satisfied at equilibrium. Okay, so what is the first order condition? Well, we've got a product of two functions here. There is first uh, the first function times the deri derivative of the second, which is 1. Okay, plus the derivative of the first here uh, times the second. This must be equal to zero, and this holds at the equilibrium, so for the quantities q1c and q2c. Okay. Now, let's do the same for the sequential move game. Here, the, the program of firm 1 is a bit different. Remember, it anticipates the reaction of firm 2. Okay. Now, if you compare the two objective functions here, you realize that Q1 appears at the third place. So let's look at here. So it changes the price directly, but it also changes the price indirectly through the reaction of firm 2. And of course, we've got the quantity here. Okay, so there is an additional element in the first order condition. So here you find the same two elements as before. Okay, but there is another element which is a chain of effects. If Q1 changes, then Q2 as a reaction changes as well, and because Q2 changes, the price changes. Okay, so there is a third element in the marginal revenue here uh, because firm 1 influences the choice of firm 2. Now, if I want to compare uh, the two programs, I want to evaluate this first order condition at the equilibrium quantity of the corner game. Okay, so this is done here. I'm just replacing Q1 by Q1C everywhere. So this is the same line as before. I've just replaced Q1 by Q1C. But we know that Q2 of Q1C is Q2C. Okay, the reaction uh, at equilibrium, we have the intersection of the reaction functions. Okay, so I can replace Q2 of Q1C by Q2C everywhere hence this line here, and now we know that the first two terms uh, are equal to zero. Okay, This is the first order condition of the Kono game. We've got exactly the same thing here. Now, what matters is to find the sign of this third term, Okay, and I've already shown the result. This is positive. Why is this positive? Well, the first term is how the price, the quantity of Q2, sorry, changes the price. We know that it's negative demand function is downward sloping okay and the second term how does q2 changes when cha sorry how does q2 change when q1 changes we know that this is negative why because we have strategic substitutes the reaction functions are sloping downwards said in still other words firm 2 reacts by decreasing its quantity when firm 1 increases its quantity. Okay, so minus by minus makes plus, meaning that 
this term here is positive, meaning the, that the first order condition evaluated at Q and C is positive. What does that mean? It means that if the, uh, the firm in this sequential move game was choosing Q and C, well, it would have an incentive to increase further its quantity because the marginal profitability is positive. Okay, so if you increase Q1 above Q1C, you still increase your profit. Okay, so this shows anal analytically that firm one in the sequential move game has an incentive to increase its quantity above the quantity it would choose in the corner game. Okay? And this is for the reasons I was mentioning before. Right? Now, we can move now to price choices. Okay? And we won't do uh, a lot of uh, computations here. The only thing that I want to show is that we'll have the opposite result. Okay? So let's still go, uh, consider the quantity choices. Okay? So what we've just shown is that the, the previ previous result of a first mover advantage uh, depends on the strategic substitutability. Okay? It's because firm 1 knows that firm 2 will react by decreasing its quantity when firm 1 increases its quantity, that firm 1 has an incentive to increase its quantity. Okay? So the follower reacts to an increase in the leader's quantity by decreasing its own quantity, and this is what gives, makes it profitable for the leader to commit to a larger quantity. Okay, so to, to say to say in in, in uh, or to show in period one that it will increase its quantity. Now, if you look at the competition in prices, you've got a, a, an opposite logic. Okay, why? Because remember here we've got strategic complementarity. The prices move in the same direction. If one firm increases its price, the other firm reacts by increasing its price as well. Okay. And the reverse, if one firm decreases its price, the other firm reacts by decreasing its price as well. Okay, so this is what is meant here when we say that if the leader acts, aggress acts aggressively by decreasing its price, the follower will react aggressive aggressively as well. Okay, so that gives an incentive to the leader to set a higher price than under simultaneous moves. It prefers to be soft, in a sense, to set a high price because it doesn't want to trigger an aggressive reaction from the second firm. Okay? But for that reason, it's preferable to be the follower okay? and have a kind of wait-and-see approach and say, well, uh, let the leader fix its price and then I'm going to observe this price and be able to set a lower price in order to attract consumers. Okay? So, without entering into all the details here, let me just state uh, the main result. If we've got a duopoly, so one leader and one follower, if they produce substitutable products under constant unit costs, and if we've got one firm choosing its price before the other firm, then the subgame perfect equilibrium is such that at least one firm has a second mover advantage. Okay, so they could have different costs, but at least one firm will prefer to play the game where it is second than the similar game where it is first. Okay, so you see we've got the opposite result here. Uh, under price competition and sequential choices, there is a second mover advantage. It's better to be second than first. Okay, so we, we can use the same ana analytical methodology to, to show the intuition behind this result. Okay, so here take two demand functions Q1 of P1, P2 and Q2 of P1, P2. Okay, and still assume that the costs are equal to zero. Okay, if the firms move at the same time, well, look at firm one, it chooses its price P1 to maximize this profit here. And I'm not going to repeat all the steps, but the, the first order condition is satisfied as, at the equilibrium. We, we noted P1B and P2B, B for Bertrand. Okay, and this uh, equation holds at equilibrium. Okay. Now, if you move to the sequential move game where firm 1 is the leader, then you know that firm 1 can anticipate the reaction of firm 2. Okay. So, the price P1 has a 
another, a third way to influence the revenues directly by changing the price, but also by changing the quantity either directly or indirectly, indirectly through the change of P2. Okay, so you've got here a third element in the marginal revenue, which is again a, a, a sequence or a chain of changes. If you change P1, it's going to change P2. And if P2 changes, it's going to change the quantity demanded. And that multiplies the price uh, that firm 1 is choosing. Okay? As I did before, I'm want, I want to evaluate this first order condition at the price that would be chosen under simultaneous moves. Okay? And we know that if we evaluate this at P1B, well, P2 of P1B is equal to P2B. So as before, the first two terms add up to zero because they correspond to the first order condition of the Bertrand game. And what matters is the sign of the last term. And here, first we have that this ratio is positive. If P2 increases, then the demand that goes to firm 1 increases. Okay, this is logical. If the other product becomes more expensive, I am going to receive more clients. Okay, and we have strategic complements. So we know that they move in the same direction. If P1 increases, P2 as a reaction will increase as well. Okay, plus by plus makes plus. And so the whole term here is positive. We have exactly the same interpretation as before. If when the firms move sequentially, if the leader was choosing the same price as when they move at the same time, so if it was choosing P1B, then it would have an incentive to increase its price further because that can increase its profit. Okay, so that, uh, this is a way to verify that under sequential choices of prices, the leader sets a higher price than in the case where the two prices are set at the same time. Okay, and if you look at the book, you will have the argument showing you that because of this, because uh, the price chosen here is larger than P1B, it also means that firm 1 will make a lower profit than firm 2. Okay, and this justifies the fact that, at least in a symmetric model, firm 2 has an advantage, so there is a second mover advantage. Right, so let us finish with... Uh, a quick uh, view about what happens when there are many potential followers. Okay, so there is one firm which is a leader and potentially um, any uh, number of followers, but when we say endogenous, uh, it's because what the leader does may influence the number of followers. Okay, so as we said before, an example would be the market for a drug. You've got a pharmaceutical company that has uh, a patent on a particular drug. This pattern is going to expire at some date, and then generic producers will be able to enter the market. Okay, but at the last period of the patent, the leader is choosing a price or a quantity before the generic producers will set their own price or quantity. Okay. Now, what we observe in reality is that the leader uh, often cuts its price or uh, sets a higher quantity, and one reason to do that could be that it wants to keep the number of entrants low. Okay, so by having a lower price, by being aggressive, it reduces the profitability of the market, and this will discourage some entrants to enter. Okay, which of course is something beneficial for the leader because it reduces uh, future competition. Okay, so this is a theoretical prediction that the leader always acts more aggressively. Okay, there is aggressively meaning setting either larger quantities or lower prices, okay? And as we said, the intuition is that uh, the leader is also concerned about the effect of its own decision on the, the extent of the future competition, so the number of firms that enter, okay? And this intuition is true whatever the, the choice that is made in this industry, whether it's quantity or prices, is not that important, okay? And this theoretical prediction is in line with what is observed in reality, okay? So just to, to cut a long story short, when there are many potential followers, 
and when the leader is concerned about limiting the number of entrants, then there is not uh, a big difference between price or quantity competition. What matters here is that we observe that the leader is always more aggressive than the followers. And this is it for today. Thank you for your attention.